Hello and welcome. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can structure your database. So far, we have a few tables. If I show you SQL Pro, this is all the tables we have. But in this video, you will understand which information you can save in your database and which information you cannot save. Why you shouldn't do it, about, it is about the privacy of Shopify. So if I come to my app, this is the wishlist. In the previous video, I said all the information I need is the customer ID and the product ID. So how about the customer email address, the name and other stuff? You are not going to store all those information in your database. The reason for that is the privacy. Imagine if someone access to your database and they will have access to hundreds and thousands of people's email address. So that is not something that you should do and Shopify also does not recommend you to do this one. All you have to do is get the customer ID and store it. And if you wanna take the information about the customer, get it directly from Shopify using the Shopify API, which I'm going to show you in the next videos. So for now, if I come to the editor, I am going to create my table. And for the table, I'm going to call it wishlist. So wishlist is going to be the table, and this is going to store all the wishlist in the entire app. So it is going to store the wishlist from various like different stores. So this is the name of it. Now for wishlist, we are going to need a table, right? Also, we need a model and a controller. So I can use PHP artisan make model and then I'm going to write the model name. What is the model? It is wishlist. And if I give it a flag of FMRC or let's say model resourceful controller, then it is going to create a controller also a migration for me. So if I create like press enter, it is going to create the model successfully, which is the wishlist here, which is our class. And also it did create a database for us in the migration folder. If also if you check the HTTP uh, directory, you have the wishlist controller. We have everything here. And now I will come to the table and we will customize it. You know, timestamp is going to store the created and updated as data, which is very important. For rest of the days, we are going to need a few more information. I'm going to store a string here and I will call it shop ID. Shop ID is going to store the URL of this store. Now this information might not be the same as the app that you are building. So the app that you are building might not need all, all of this, but it is very important that you understand how and which information you want to store. In the future, if I want to say which store have the most wishlist like item in their cart, or in their database, I can do it based on the uh, shop ID. Next up, what else I need to store in the database? So again, it is going to be a string and this is going to be customer ID. So based on the customer ID, I can understand who added this item to the wish list. And next I have to store the product ID here and this is also going to be a string. Oops, I don't know why it is auto completing the wrong one. Okay, it should be product ID. And as you may know, it is singular. So it is going to store product ID. Currently, this is all the information I need. In the previous sub I have built, this structure was a little different. So I'm going to use a standard way of doing it here. So if I save it for now, this is all we need. And I'm going to migrate my database, PHP artisan migrate now it did migrate our database and if i come to my database and refresh it this is the wish list and this is the basic structure i have simple as this much like currently if i check out the controller everything is empty here now all i have to do is create a route for this one let's see if someone click on this one send the customer id the product id to the back end of the store and then it should add it to the appropriate like the customer who is logging so i'm going to create an account also here so i should be logging because if i'm not logging i shouldn't be able to add a product to the cart in the first place i'm going to handle that if i check that my cart here i cannot log in so if you don't know about shopify you know what is wrong if you cannot log in it is because the login is not enabled you can go to the setting and from here you can go to the checkout and you should make the account as uh, optional or required. Currently it is disabled, so it should be optional. Once you save this information, now you should have another menu in the default theme 
that is going to uh, lead you to the login page I'm going to create an account for the rest of the video you don't have to follow but I'm going to clearly say it is a WordPress something like that admin at admin then I'm going to say add I'm going to create my account yes I have to submit it I'm not a robot this is the challenge page and here you go I have created my account and everything is fine now I can go to the catalog going to the wish list here if I inspect element I can check like my customer uh, ID should be attached to this button here this is the product ID and this is the customer ID these are not sensitive inf information so based on the ID you cannot do much and much things so that's it for this video I hope it has been informative thank you for watching in the next video we are going to create an API and store those information here in the database so I will see you in the next video